Hello there everybody, it's Donnie with El Gallo Fly Fishing Lodge and I am going to show you how to tie the gummy minnow. So this guy right here is kind of a custom job. This is not necessarily the same thing that, uh, that Blaine Chocolate came up with 20 years ago. That guy is a genius, by the way, for, for inventing this uh, and some of the other things that he's done too. I think very highly of his patterns. But uh, I digress, there is a little bit of a better way of doing it. So. You can make it out of silicone yourself, right? Or you can make it this pattern right here. This pattern's uh, immensely easier and uh, it's, it's equally as effective, if not more so. So hang around for a second. We'll teach you how to make this guy right here. It looks good, doesn't it? I wanna eat it myself. Never mind. Okay, so first thing we're gonna start off with is a three-aught hook. Boing, boing, boing. This is a nickel plated, black nickel plated, three aught, uh, pretty wide shank. Um, I'm sorry, wide bend, uh, longer shank hook, and you can see that it's kind of offset, right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with some uh, lead, right? And also, I I, I got to tell you, this is a little bit of a bigger pattern than than what was originally designed. Uh, it's, it's thought of as kind of the blue water pattern, but it's a four odd hook. So it's a, it's a giant hook, but rooster fish are giant fish. So fair play. All right, so we've got about eight or 10 wraps of that there. And you can vary that upon how heavy you want this thing to be and what kind of action you want from it. So we're gonna take some thread, secure this down a little bit. We're gonna take a little bit of zap a gap And we're gonna secure that down. We're just gonna make sure that this goes nowhere that it's not supposed to. All right, so you might have noticed that there is a tail on the flies that I tied earlier on. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're gonna get rid of that tag end real fast. There is some big streamer hair that you can get from Fly Tires Dungeon. It's really good stuff. I like to tie in a little bit of this on the back side of our weight. So basically what I do is I just take this, double it over my thread, secure that down to the hook shank. Bring this all the way back forward. Whip finish it. Okay, now things get a little bit complicated. So, we've already got some pieces cut here. colors that we're going to go with are going to be verde, we've got some clear, and then we've got a little bit of this, uh, this opaque color here, this mother of pearl color. So what we're going to do is kind of measure this out to be the same size. A good sharp pair of scissors is going to be worth its weight in gold with this pattern. So basically what you want to do is just kind of kind of measure it over and see how big you want this fly to be. So what this is gonna end up representing is gonna be sardinas. So we want that to be fairly wide, right? And fair warning, right off the bat, this, uh, this pattern takes quite a bit of material, but man, if it's worth it, if anything's worth it, it's this thing in my opinion. So we're gonna start off with this. What we can do is we can kind of trim this pattern back a little bit on the back side of this and then keep that for uh, other things that we might want to do with nymphs and things like that later on. And that's kind of the general pattern that we've got right there. Uh, you can do also, if you'd like, if you want to be high speed about this deal, cut your green 
Okay, rock on. Once you get started, it kind of goes pretty easy thereafter. <clears throat> but you can just line this up kind of down the middle of this deal. And nothing is precise and nothing is exact. But basically it kind of looks like that, right? Oh, it takes forever. Okay, now then, <clears throat> we've got that. So, the next thing we can do is kind of measure out how much of this we want on the top versus how much we want on the bottom. And you want to go a little bit long with this guy right here. So, you can kind of tack that down like that. Pull that synthetic fiber back. There you have that part. Okay, so from here, <clears throat> you just trim, right? Knock down this front side over here. Boom, just like that. And you wanna kind of follow the profile of what the actual animal looks like. But you're gonna end up with it being skinnier, of course. Stuff is pretty forgiving actually, so don't don't be afraid of it. Having said that, the first couple of times that you that you play with these things, um, don't be surprised that you waste a little bit of material. Okay, next step. We're gonna throw some eyeballs on this dude. So you can tell already, kind of the action of this thing, it just kind of flutters in the water and makes a bunch of really cool movement and it looks very realistic. So uh, again, with our, uh, with our Zappa Gap, we're gonna go back here towards where the weight is, right? Throw on a couple of uh, beads of this stuff on each side. Grab some prismatic 3D eyes. You can use flat eyes on this too. I kind of like the way that these look, so I just use these. Set those down there pretty well. <clears throat> You want to give them a couple of minutes to dry too. While you're doing that, you can trim other things. So trim your tail up a little bit. Then I can tell you for sure definitively, this is not going to be enough clear for that. So I'm going to hack off some more of this clear. The clear stuff, you go through about twice as fast as everything else. So use twice as much of it because you're going over the whole thing with it. That's kind of the protective coat of everything. So just kind of measure it out. Give her a little snip, snippy snip snips. And then just kind of measure that as well. So. Okay, there we go. 
All right, I forgot a step here. There's one other thing, um, and this is kind of important with shad patterns and sardina patterns and things of that nature, is they've got a little black dot back here. I like to make sure that I've got that because it's, uh, it's pretty pronounced whenever you look at them in the water, the, the real bait. It's almost like a second eye. But I've noticed that there's a little bit of an increased response of them actually grabbing onto these things whenever you have that. And that's just a regular black Sharpie. Uh, you can do other things to these as well. Add gills, do things like that with Sharpies. That they, uh, they mark up pretty easily. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this towards us right here. Line this up to where it's about in the middle. Pull everything tight. Run that down the top like that and then just kind of pinch it all over. So whenever you use 3D eyes like this, you're gonna have some air bubbles in there and things like that. Just work those out. normal. Okay, from there you just trim. All right, so we're gonna put this back in the vise right here. And then the way that you finish this is you actually throw another amount of thread up on the front. So making these bigger patterns like this, this stuff has a tendency of, of sort of following the thread. So you have to be a little bit careful about that. What I like to do is grab onto this side of the thread and pull it over this way and kind of cheat it just a little bit. And you'll notice that you've got this above where the eye is. Just kind of pull that off. And the thread will cut that silicone. arrange what you got there. Build a little, little bit of a head up here. Whip finish that. Add a little bit of Zappa Gap. And then you'll notice that where the silicone is fresh here, it's sticky, and it'll stick to other flies if you have it in a box. So what I like to do is just hit this with Zappa Gap as well on that leading edge, and um, it'll toughen this fly up a little bit, number one, but number two, it won't mess your whole fly box up whenever you put it in there. So if you've got marabou, it will end up as a part of this. And then that's it. The blue water gummy minnow. That thing moves like crazy. You can tie them in different silhouettes, uh, different profiles, different colors, 
different uh, sizes, all of that stuff. The thing that remains with these though is they've got a great action. They're very realistic in the water and um, you can accomplish a lot of different things with them. So I have at least half a dozen of these every time I go to Baja in different sizes and, and different profiles and different colors as well. So I'm Donnie. This has been the, uh, the Gummy Minnow Experience and um, I hope this has helped you out. If it has, please let us know. Thank you.